so <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a very small piece of the Vision Zero effort at the city. Uh, but I really want to acknowledge first that the work that the city is doing on Vision Zero and Safer Streets does not happen without all the people in this room. Uh, without the leadership from advocacy, without the support of uh, Vinit Gupta, who's here, and Charlotte Fleetwood from BTD, who's really just uh, taking, she's probably not here because she's still at her desk working on this. She is here. Can we all give Charlotte a round of applause for the work that she's doing? <laughs> so even though I will talk about this tonight, a lot of, uh, a lot of this is shared work. Uh, and thanks to Livable Streets for putting on this event. I think every year I take away something from this that in, in, in sort of uh, inspires me in the next year. So I'm going to talk about Boston's Safest Driver. Uh, I'm the co-chair of the Mayor's Office of New York Mechanics. Uh, spoiler alert, the safest driver is not me. It's also not David Hasselhoff <laughs> or Michael Knight. Uh, most people probably know this stat. So in 2015, there were 23 people that were killed in traffic fatalities on our roadways in Boston. There were 4,285 people who were injured in those crashes. During that same time span, and we saw sort of an uptick of pedestrian crashes in early 2016, uh, Allstate Insurance ranked Boston out of 200 cities in the country dead last for drivers, right? And a lot of this is tied to sort of how people make claims for crashes. Uh, you're more likely to make those claims in a shorter amount of time span in Boston. But this was, in addition to what we were sort of hearing from this group, motivation for us to think about how we do sort of an educational campaign for drivers. Uh, for anybody that's old enough to remember clerks, 14-year-old uh, me is very excited that I got to put this in a presentation. <laughs> The idea when we were thinking through sort of design challenges for this were threefold. The first was that if you ask somebody if they think they're a good driver, they say yes. In fact, there's a pretty well-cited study that about 80% of people think they are above average at driving. Uh, we all know that statistically that's probably not possible. Um, the second thing that we were challenged with is how do we make it feel like government isn't telling you to do something that you already think you're really good at? And the third thing we were looking at was how do we make people feel more accountable for their actions and not just pointing out somebody else as that sort of bad actor on the roadway. So we're sort of thinking through those design challenges um, and largely it came down to how do we make people feel like somebody's watching you but it's not government, it's sort of a more uh, friendly backseat driver uh, perhaps in your car. And at the same time we had a, a great conversation with a local startup called Cambridge Mobile Telematics. They're actually uh, sort of the leader in this space around the country. This happened to be in our backyard. And they said, we'd love to think about developing an app for you guys uh, and putting together a competition in Boston. And that's where we landed with Boston Safest Driver. So a little bit of a paradox, having a smartphone app uh, to make people better drivers. We realized that there are lots of precautions in there about uh, making sure that people aren't using it and looking at it while they're driving. Uh, but the app focuses on five things, speeding, accelerating, how harshly you're braking, you're cornering, and if you're actually playing with your smartphone. So we put together a, a great marketing campaign that played off uh, Boston's fear of being last in anything and our sort of willingness to be uh, competitive with each other. Uh, we threw uh, a colleague of mine from Newer Mechanics, Steve Walter, into a car, a boat, uh, a cargo bike. If you haven't seen this video, it's about a minute and a half long. I'm not going to play it here uh, so that I don't go over time. But uh, it's totally worth checking out. It's on the city's YouTube channel. Steve actually folded himself into a cargo bike, and uh, we made a, a programmer undo it, uh, push him around. And. What we actually got was uh, a pretty good uptake. So we launched this in October. In the first uh, two weeks, we had about 2,500 people that had signed up to use the app. Turned out people were actually interested if they were above average drivers or not. Uh, and over the course of the last sort of two months that we've done this, and this is sort of based on some nudge behavior things, we wanted to do a long enough time span that became a habit for people. Uh, but we hit 20 different Boston neighborhoods and over 100 cities and towns uh, in the metro Boston area which is good because our, our contest was actually limited to 101 cities and towns. So uh, if you wrap in Boston there, we hit our target. And to get people excited about this, you may actually recognize some of the people in these photos, uh, we, gave out about, uh, we gave out weekly prizes to people in about eight different categories. Even for people who uh, weren't driving at all, there was a car-free trips prize uh, that probably some of the people in this room might have won. And we got some pretty good feedback. Uh, so my wife is actually a, <laughs> my wife is a second grade teacher, 
Uh, and she likes to talk about when she's building empathy with eight-year-olds, windows and mirrors. So what's a window looking in on somebody uh, and you can learn something about that person? What's a mirror that you hold up to yourself to sort of understand who you are? And what we saw was there are a lot of people that were really curious about windows, right? They wanted to know what their neighbor or their husband or their partner or their child were doing. Uh, but in the process, we're actually reflecting on themselves too. Uh, so in addition to great feedback from people, we also generated a whole bunch of data. And don't worry, it's all anonymized. Uh, it's aggregated. Uh, and I'm going to show you just some snapshots uh, of very sort of early analysis. These are events. And it's hard to see here, but the colors are actually signifying different things. So the yellow is, uh, is speeding. The blue is breaking. And if you zoom in on some sections of the city, this is Longfellow Bridge. The red is actually phone use, right? Which could mean that people are probably just stuck in traffic <laughs> and they are bored out of their minds and they pull out their phone. But we, we'll have sort of a, a pretty big data set to be able to look at uh, where these types of behaviors are happening across the city. This is an example of speeding. You can see it's sort of mostly concentrated on state roads, federal highways around the city. And this is phone use. And if I toggle between these two, let's see if you can see that. See how it kind of disperses out onto the neighborhood streets with phone use which is a pretty big concern for us, right? That means more people are driving around on neighborhood streets potentially using their phones. So over the next year, we'll, uh, or next few months, we'll work with MIT CSAIL and Cambridge Mobile Telematics to sort of analyze this data. Maybe there's interesting things about how people are linking their trips together or what types of behaviors are happening in certain neighborhoods and how we would sort of target a messaging campaign to those neighborhoods or potentially intersections that have lots of instances of people accelerating or harshly breaking that we can do design changes to. So, I know you all want to know who won. We wrapped up the contest on Sunday. We have a $3,000 grand prize that we're giving away to the best driver in Boston. I'm not going to tell you. It is actually all of us. So when we look at the top 25% of the users, we saw a dramatic reduction in phone use almost by 50%. Heartbreaking and speeding dropped by about a third in those people, which says to us that people are actually willing to maybe change their behavior and sort of take those behaviors to heart over time. And with that, I finished on time. So. <laughs>